All righty. Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Burbank, and I'm really excited because today I'm going to be talking and interviewing with Eddie Toledo Jr. Eddie, uh, you want to say hello? Hey, everybody. Um, so Eddie is a, a college, uh, recent college grad from Western Washington University. Um, I'm just excited to talk with him about the topic of the day, which is going to be focusing on what it takes to become a profitable and successful keynote speaker. And um, Eddie, we go way back to Western Washington University, where we both attended college. And um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to hear what um, Eddie's been up to in his um, career related endeavors and how he's continuing to develop himself to becoming the best keynote speaker um, in the in his in his field of interest. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Um, so to start with, uh, for those of you for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brandon Burbank, and I specialize in talking about mental health, personal development, and also with financial related goals to build financial wealth and develop success in life. So I'm a life coach. I'm an author. I'm a content creator, obviously on my YouTube channel, and then I have other keynote speaking opportunities that I'm looking for. Um, worldwide and then also based out of Long Beach, California. So um, with that being said, let's get into it. Um, Eddie, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Um, so kind of like as you, as you explained, um, a recent college grad um, from Western Washington University, uh, specializing in supply chain management and operations management. Um, and going into the field um, specifically here. Um, and so I'm from, I'm based out of Seattle, Washington um, and more related to, more related to a little bit of my, my own career. Um, I did a couple of internships with uh, Amazon corporate. Um, I was of last, in, last summer and summer before that, um, as well as working with different organizations, volunteering, um, and you know one of my one of my key uh, specializations is in um, the circular economy, more more specifically the um, building and uh, building tactics for businesses to um, transition into into that space um, and transition into what is called the circular supply chain um, that bases around um, sustainability. Um, and so that's kind of like what my focus is in my career. Um, but because of that specialization as well um, is what leads us to this topic of keynote speaking um, where I've done a couple of keynote speaking um, presentations uh, worldwide as well um, as local ones um, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so I've done some in, uh, in, in South Africa, uh, I've done some talks in the Netherlands, um, as well as Seattle and um, California. And so, uh, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. I'm very excited um, with uh, the direction I'm going with um, and very excited to just be able to, you know, help help other people kind of know know and how to get started with with public speaking since it's not a it's not an easy thing to get to get started with for sure yeah um and then so uh let's move on to the next question then um number two which is what inspired you to learn more how to become a keynote speaker yeah absolutely um you know that's a it's an interesting question because um in my personal opinion which has changed a lot um, since since I be since I wanted to become a keynote speaker, you know. Uh, my initial thoughts behind this were that if I, if you wanted to become a leader, you needed to know how to how to talk to people, right? How to talk to different groups of people, um, be able to stand up to them with um, stand up um, and and speak, and so if in my eyes years ago, um, I thought that if you wanted to become a, become a good leader uh, in your space, um, this was one of the skills that you needed. Um, so, 
and my idea has changed a lot from that initial point. Like, um, you know, you do not need to be a good public speaker in order to be a good leader. Um, but that's initially my thought of how to, what inspired me to become a keynote speaker was was that was that thought years ago. Um, so I started on that. I started on that route of you know um, really public speaking and how to become a public speaker. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what, ins what inspired me. Um, like I said, years ago, I, I saw these two, um, these two presenters that were just so, so put together. I mean, it seemed like there was no worries in the world. Um, they were just spoke so elegantly, so confidently, um, you know, any curveballs that were thrown at them, they were able to take it, um, you know, really able to tell a story, which is what um, public speakers do. Um, you know, they're good storytellers. So if you're able to tell a good story, you know, you'll be able to be a good public speaker. What are some of the benefits for those that are interested in keynote speaking in general? And how could they develop themselves more by exploring that opportunity to becoming a keynote speaker? Um, I mean, there's tons of opportunities. I mean, of course, the opportunity is always uh, one of the biggest ones when you think about keynote speaking is, you know, being able to um, profit off of it, um, whether that's, you know, talking at conferences or talking within um, within com getting hired, getting hired to speak at like companies or schools or uh, different organizations. Um, of course, that is that is one of the benefits, but I think it goes beyond that and what you personally think is a benefit. You know, I do it in the interest of, uh, I, I do it because I, you know, am specializing within a certain field that a lot of people aren't there yet. Like they don't know about this topic that I'm talking about and I'm not doing it for profit because because not that I don't, I can't, but because I want to educate people um, in the direction that we need to be going. This is the direction we need to be going within, in my field in supply chain. This is the, this is why, and I want them to be able to start getting an idea uh, more than anything. So I do it because I want to educate, educate people and inspire thought. Okay. Um, and so um, I really think, based on your question, I really think it's what you, what you personally want to get out of it. Um, if it's profit, then awesome. You know, profit is all it, you know, that's definitely a good reason, benefit. Um, but as of myself, I don't, like I said, I don't do it, I don't do it for profit, but I do it because of a, of a different reason. Um, and that to, that's to everyone, you know, you, Brandon might do public speaking for for your own personal reasons um, that don't include profit. And so I believe that that's, you know, it's a loaded question. And for whoever wants to be a public speaker, um, you got to find that out for yourself as to, you know, why you're doing what you're doing. Um, yeah, that's a, that's and a lot of that, funny. and a lot of that is because of usually around the area that you're speaking about. That's really good insight, Eddie. Yeah, I agree with you on a lot of those things. Um, and um, moving on to the next question, which is, um, what has what has been the best parts about learning how to be a keynote speaker? Yeah, I think the biggest, I think the the best parts have been really a develop personal development, um, because it's it's not easy, um, and some people are. I mean, some people really are gifted and with with being able to to speak in front of people but for myself it wasn't I used to be the shyest person ever um and couldn't even stand in front of my own classmates without like trembling and my voice shaking and um and so you know a lot of I think public speaking has a lot to do with courage um and it's because it's not easy so you know, I congratulate everybody who can, who can, you know, talk in, amongst uh, peers, who can 
get up in front of a classroom, in front of a group of people, um, on the radio, um, in front of hundreds of people, thousands of people, um, because it's not an easy thing. Um, and so the, the best part for me becoming a, a keynote speaker has been my own personal development um, and seeing how far I've grown from being just a shy kid to, you know, being, you know, speaking to hundreds of people um, at once. And so having essentially all eyes on me. Um, and so just that courage, really courage and confidence that I'm able to do, you know, what I do um, and do it well. And, you know, I'm very proud of that. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Eddie, what advice would you give to someone who is interested in becoming a keynote speaker? Yeah, I think the biggest advice, um, the best advice that I can give is try to get in front of anybody. Um, really, public speaking is just like any other um, communication skill. You know, um, it doesn't need to be a lot of people think you, when you're public speaking, you know, you're speaking to hundreds, thousands of people all the time. But really, public speaking, you can be talking to 10 people, five people, um, you know, a couple dozen people. Um, it's just the fact that you're up there doing it, speaking on something takes a lot of courage and bravery. And so I think my advice is to start small. Um, if you've never done this before, um, the, if you've never done this before, um, just start small, get in front of some people, uh, practice what you want to speak on and do it. Um, you know, if you're a student, um, if you're going to classes, try to get in front of, try to get to get in any position that you can to get in front of the class to present or in any, in any case, uh, just try to get in front of people. Um, and that develops practice, um, that starts getting over, over those fears. Um, like when I was starting, I took on any case that I could to get in front of people um, because I started learning how to public speak in high school. And so I got into roles that, that made me speak in front of the entirety of the school. Um, so in a lot of leadership positions, you know, and I pushed myself to be in those positions, to feel uncomfortable, to be all eyes on me. Um, and even though at times, you know, I was shaking, trembling underneath, you know, all of those, all of those experiences led me to where I am now. Um, so I would say, you know, that would be the biggest thing as far as like being a public speaker is just try to get in front of anybody who you can um, and talk about a certain topic. Um, and if you're able to sustain that topic, you know, that's awesome. Keep doing that. Um, and so it doesn't matter what the topic is, business, mental health, personal development. Um, it could be talking about your, your favorite show, you know, your favorite movie, uh, what your hobbies are, where your interests are, how to learn guitar, whatever. It doesn't matter if you're able to talk about a certain topic in front of more than one person. Uh, that's awesome. And so, like I said, it's not just like any other, it, it's, it's just like any other communication thing. You know, if you're able to communicate well, if you're able to tell a good story, this is what I always learned is if you're able to tell a good story, you will be a great public speaker um, because that's what public speaking is. There's an end, there's a middle, there's, an, there's a beginning um, to, your, to your presentations. So just think of it as a story, create a mental story and just tell it. Yeah. Um, just like you're with your family, you're telling the story. That's exactly what it is, but you're just telling strangers this story now. Cool. Uh, and then how has your, your, you mentioned earlier that uh, you are a recent graduation from Western Washington University, right? Right. Congratulations. That's a huge uh, milestone in, in, I would say, in anyone's life to uh, get a bachelor's degree in uh, a field of supply chain management and, and operations management. So hats off to you on that, Eddie. Um, with that being said, my question uh, to you is how has your education helped prepare you for the business world in your desired field? Absolutely. I mean, uh, beyond just the course curriculum, um, 
I think that my my education in general has helped me just because, um, you know, the people that I've met um, and related to um, related to the topic that we're talking about as far as public speaking, you know, I've met some amazing public speakers because of my education, you know, and because of that, you know, I was able to learn a lot more from them, ask the certain questions that I could ask, like, you know, um, how do you walk on a stage or, you know, how do you prepare for certain, certain things? Um, so in that sense, you know, my education has helped me because of the people that I've met um, within the field of, within the topic of public speaking, as far as like preparing me for the business world and my desired field, it comes back to that same thing as, you know, I've learned, I learned a ton from, from my course curriculum as you will with any, with any curriculum. Um, but you also learn with hands-on experience um, and hands-on experience as far as just trying to get into any, any um, position you can within your desired field uh, while, while pursuing school. Um, you know, I know that sounds hard and some people might say, uh, you know, I don't have time or whatever, but, you know, I was a full-time student working 40 hours a week. Um, so I know how hard it is to work a full-time job and go to school full-time. Um, but during the summers, I pursued these internships, which really gave me, gave me the utmost um, and beneficial skills and experience that I needed um, to really prepare me and thrive to leave uh, the university um, and to, you know, to secure a position months before I even graduated. And so um, that's how my education has helped me. You know, I've met the correct people. I've met people in general. Um, and, you know, I've pushed myself to get into positions uh, where I'm going to get the most the most experience in my desired field, because at the end of the day, um, you know, six months of experience is better than no months of experience. And that's what businesses really look at. Um, and so, and a business is who you know um, nowadays and who you can get recommendations from, referrals. And so uh, networking is such a huge, huge thing, um, I would say, as far as when you're going to school. Um, and yeah. one thing that mm -hmm. I would recommend to absolutely everybody who crosses my, uh, who I talk to. Cool, yeah. Um, and then also back to with the whole keynote speaking, um, subject in itself, what discovery within yourself that has helped you take your life to the next level, your, your development of yourself, what is keynote speaking or, or public speaking done to help with that? Yeah, like I said, um, as I touched on earlier, um, as far as um, what have been the best part about learning, um, you know, my, my courage and my confidence in myself have been immensely, um, you know, just huge. And so, because like I was saying, you know, um, I was, I wasn't able to stand in front of people um, at all in any scenario. And so I didn't have the confidence in myself um, to be able to speak on a topic that, you know, I might have known very well, but just because of my fears, I wasn't able to, um, and people didn't know what I was capable of. So that's what public speaking and keynote speaking has really, has really helped me with is increase my own personal confidence in myself. Um, and uh, reassuring that, you know, I know what I'm talking about. And I know that I'm telling a good story because of the people on the other side and their feedback you know and it's thank you and it's thanks to the people on the other side and their feedback that i'm able to you know become a better speaker um you know um it's thanks to the people who you know helped me rehearse for such events yeah. um who gave me feedback as far as like hey this is what you know what you should touch on more or you know this is how you should talk about this certain topic um what you should or shouldn't do 
um, uh, your story isn't adding up, uh, et cetera. Just any type of feedback that you can get, positive or negative, uh, constructive. Um, all of that helped me with my confidence um, to be able to speak on things. Um, and I know now, you know, that whatever I touch on, um, it's going to be worthwhile to somebody. And so um, my own personal, my own personal mental um, confidence and knowledge um, have definitely increased from from these experiences. So that's how I've personally developed um, and how keynote speaking has been a benefit to myself. Um, so yeah, awesome. Well, um, to wrap things up, do you have any other comments or questions to bring up to the viewers? Um, nothing beyond what I've already explained as far as my advice is, you know, like I said, it's, it's a very, it's a very intimidating, um, thing, skill, um, I would say, and nobody should take it lightly. Um, you know, people laugh at, people will try to make fun of you, laugh at you for, for, you know, um, shaking in your boots up wherever you're talking, but, you know, you leverage that as much as you can, because all of that stuff is stuff that you should leverage and use it as a booster to continue going. Um, because I was in those shoes and I was shaking in my shoes when I started. Um, and uh, as a teenager, of course, uh, teenagers are brutal. And so, you know, they made fun, they made fun of me. And so that's why I decided to you know, be comfortable with the uncomfortableness of speaking. So, and I pushed myself with to to the max to be able to get in all those all those positions. So I'd say, you know, take it a step at a step. You, I would say, if I was, <laughs> you can't just throw yourself and start talking to uh, hundreds of people all of a sudden. It doesn't work that way, um, and it's a very polished skill. And it takes time, just like anything else to learn. Um, just because one can talk to somebody else doesn't mean that they can tell a good story. Um, and so I'd say, you know, the biggest thing is before you're going to do anything and speak to people, rehearse it in your mind, rehearse it with yourself, with others. Um, and everything works out at the end of the day. Um, like I said, it takes time. It takes practice. Um, but I believe that anybody can do this. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eddie. And um, yeah, I, I really appreciate you um, being on this YouTube channel um, interview for today. And um, for those of you that um, are not aware, Eddie is just an incredible, incredible hard worker. And he's got his things in order now with his life and his college degree now. So he's out, out here in the workforce. Uh, from what it sounds like is that correct correct so um yeah like eddie's um as he mentioned earlier um, he specializes in circular economy so if you guys any companies or um, nonprofit organizations um institutions out there that are looking for um some ideas and concepts around how to better improve uh the circular economy Eddie is definitely one of those guys that is going to say, Hey, I'll take that idea and he'll make it, make it become a reality. So think about it in that terms. Um, if you guys are interested in doing work with him in the future, um, you can direct, uh, I'll, I will, I will include, include some of his contact information in the description so that you can reach out to him directly. And with that being said, um, thank you so much, you guys for being uh, a part of this interview and for watching this. And uh, I hope that something, that um, I said or that Eddie had said as constructive and is, um, is really um, helps give you some more clarity in, in your life and your vision for what you want to accomplish for yourself, for your dreams, and especially for your, for your goals as a keynote speaker. So that's just something to think about. And um, as we wrap up this video, once again, thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much, Eddie. And um, yeah, you guys have a great night and um, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thanks.